you did it again. Um, you led me right into my next okay. question. Uh, this one's from me. So again, I get full credit or blame if it's a stupid question. Um, I've always wondered this. Uh, my layperson brain, you know, looks at a new innovation, uh, you know, a new a new generation of of chip, whether it's from an Intel and Nvidia, um, a tense torrent, whoever, right? And I look at it and I go, mm -hmm. okay, but really, tell me this, this this idea you guys implemented, where did it come from? You know, how much of that generational improvement is a we didn't think of it before versus B, we needed to try it first, but we went small before committing big, versus mm -hmm. we totally thought of it, uh, we totally knew it was a good idea, but the process node technology, for example, didn't allow it, we had other priorities. Like, how, how much of it is A, B, or C? I, wa I wanna know, right? Like 3D Vcash, it, I think it's, is an- It's all of them. Yeah, okay. It's, it's, it's really weird, so, I mean, in the platonic reality, everything already exists, right? So we, we don't actually live in that world. There's <laughs> literally an infinite number of possibilities. Most of them are bad, right? And so... <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Strange. No, it's, it's true. It's like, yeah. <laughs> like, so, so that's a problem. Um, so there's one thing, which is you work out a bunch of, you know, architect you're making a new CPU. You have a bunch of ideas. You say, these are really solid but I want to make it say wider issue, but that causes you to have to go rebuild the entire cache and fetch system. And then the, the more instructions you fetch, the better your predictors have to be. And some predictors scale just by making them bigger, but sometimes you need a better algorithm. Like the simple branch predictors we started with were fine for years. But if you're trying to keep 500 instructions in a reorder buffer and never flush the pipe, it has to be so accurate, it's unbelievable. Now, some of those things were invented. Now, here's a funny story, which is Intel ran a competition for the best branch predictor. They published the results, and the one of them was in Wikipedia. And when we first started doing Zen, we needed a really good branch predictor. So I looked it up in Wikipedia, I flew over to meet the guy, and paid him for a patent. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. Now, the mathematical... <laughs> So it turns out there's math <laughs> under these sick. kinds of predictors, which is a little related to how neural networks and AI work, right? And so the initial predictors was sort of do what you did last time, and then the, the better version was keep more track of the history of what you did before right. and use that. But at some point, it started to look more like a computation of, you know, there's this space of paths in the program, and can you map, compress that space of paths to something useful and then predict which path you should follow on, which is related to a field of mathematics. And, and then it wasn't really possible until you had enough transistors. So Moore's Law gives you more transistors every couple of years. And so there's this little, and then there's a trade-off, like in the short run, maybe I'll make this bigger because it's easy but I can't just make, keep making it bigger, so I need to find a better idea or do something sophisticated and then take advantage of all the transistors. Like, it's, it's a combination of things. And then every time you build a computer, you learn a lot about doing it. You continue the performance model, software continues to evolve. And there's some things that used to be a bad idea that are now a good idea and vice versa. So it's, you know, it's, it's complicated. Let's shift our focus. And there's lots of published stuff, you know, like, like people don't realize how much information is out there. There's 100,000 people building faster computers. Um, we haven't talked about Atomic Semi at all. And this time I'm coming in without having done any pre-briefing because I, like I said, it kind of slipped under my radar. Um, you say yeah, you you're focused. That that's, I'm, I'm at the office, that's, that's an atom. Okay, I did know it was an atom, but is that the logo? Is that the logo for the company yeah. or? Okay, cool. Yeah. So all I know is you guys are working on low cost, fabrication equipment like when you say fabrication equipment you mean like like asml fabrication equipment what, what, what are yeah, we talking exactly, about here but smaller yeah like a little little tiny one like that so you want to what, what your wafer is 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 like five centimeters or why tell, tell me about the, okay even smaller help me help me so so the semiconductor technology is great today and all the equipment is great yeah. And it got optimized to make very large wafers. 
that move very fast. Yes. Right. You know, they're 12 inches around. Like the thing that holds it weighs 50 kilograms and it moves. So yep. you look at all the machines, it's, it's really hard to build and heavy and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you got to right. account for seismic stability of the land, make sure there's no ancient burial grounds under it, that yeah, sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's amazing, <laughs> right? So, so I met this kid, Sam Zulu. Like, he made, made a fab in his garage in high school. He has a YouTube videos about it. And then I met him when he was in college. And we started talking about what it would mean to go build a set of equipment where you could make a fairly high-tech chip really fast, but just make one chip at a time. And then optimize the crap out of it because you're not solving the problem of moving 50 kilograms at you know 100 miles an hour. And you're not trying to keep something perfectly flat over a huge surface. Like basically ch change the game and make something way, way simpler. And then take advantage of like there's hundreds of billions of dollars of material research being done. You can atomic, you can deposit atomic layers of almost any material, single atom at a time. It's beautiful. So is the goal to so be we like? We decided to go. Sorry, go for it. Well, my personal goal is to go make a a really interesting chip really fast, and uh, it it feels like you know, the 3D printing. Like one of our investors said it's. Yeah, it's yeah, three, yeah, it's basically three D printing. You know, semi compared to injection molding, right? Yeah. Where you ha you don't have to deal with the enormous yeah. scale, huh? Yeah. So now the weird thing is, if you make them fast enough, it could be for more than prototyping. Right, which also, also happened with three D printing. This is, uh, yeah. Well, three D printing is amazing, and it just keeps getting better and better, and goes into more stuff. And then there's really fun stuff like you three D print molds and then injection mold that. Like what you can do today with the combination of, of modern CAD tools, 3D printing, injection molding, and then CNC and all kinds of stuff. It's it's fantastic. And yeah, so we're we're into building our own machines that make chips and you know, using an unbelievable amount of material science research. They publish everything. You can buy any 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 atomic layer deposition material you want for almost nothing. It's crazy. Yeah, it's super fun. Okay. Which, um, I, I mean, this is, it's, it's almost like a chicken egg uh, question, right? Like, which, uh, mm -hmm. which comes mm -hmm. first for you in terms of, of taking tense torrent to the next level, in terms of, um, of taking atomic semi to the next level? Do they drive each other? Like, is this an attempt to, to yeah, be maybe someday. real men own fabs? Yeah. You know, as the, the famous quote, right? Yeah, like, I is, have a fab. Is that I the goal? I have a computer science company. I have AI software. Sure. <laughs> why not, right? Yes. Why not? What are you doing this? I mean, like, like a lot of people are like, like, what are you up to? It's like, like. Damn! <laughs> Boom, roasted. I, make I know, videos. it's like, people, <laughs> hey, this planet might get hit by an asteroid or blown up by a volcano, man. I want to make sure that gets stopped. <laughs> I'm, I'm hustling. You know, right. it's like they had a backup planet, but, you know, we got, we got big problems right here. So, yeah, we got to get moving. 